Our lesson for today will be about Newton's three laws of motion. Uh, but before we will deal with these three laws of motion, let us first understand the concept of force. So what is a force? So take note that the force is the push or pull upon an object resulting from the object's interaction with another object. So push or pull. Particularly, when this block is attached to a string, it is pulled by a gravitational force. So if this block at figure B is pushed by a, let's say, Fx, it is moved by a particular force at x. If this block at point C is pulled by a particular force Fy, therefore, there will be an interaction uh, between objects. Take note that not all forces cause a motion. Example of this one is the gravitational force. Which is basically your weight. Take note that our weight is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by the acceleration of gravity. So, how did this uh, formula was defined? Normally, it was derived from Newton's law of gravitational attraction, which is F is equal to G multiplied by your M1 multiplied by M2 all over your R squared. Okay. So, this G is a constant of gravitation or your universal constant of gravitation which is approximately equal to 6.7 times 10 raised to negative 11 meter cube per kilogram per second squared. Okay? And your R is the distance between two objects and your M1 will be the mass of object 1 and M2 will be the mass of object 2. So considering your M1 will be equal to your mass or the mass of any object in the earth's surface and M2 will be equal to your mass of earth. So, deriving this formula wherein your weight is equal to mg, so letting your m will be m, or uh, m1 will be m, so we will have a formula equal to m multiplied by our g multiplied by m2, which is the mass of earth, all over our r squared. So, if you would consider your r as the earth's radius, so therefore I may say that the earth's radius is approximately equal to 6.4 times 10 raised to 6 meters and the mass of earth is approximately equal to 6 times 10 raised to 24 kilograms so particularly you can get the value of this one as your gravity so in SI, so we may say that F is equal to M multiplied by your G, ME all over R squared, wherein our G is equal to 
times 10 raised to negative 11 meter cube per kilogram multiplied by our S squared divided by our R squared which is basically equal to 6.4 times 10 raised to 6 meters and we will multiply this one by the mass of the earth which is given us 6 times 10 raised to 24 kilograms okay cancelling out this kilogram and then your 6.4 times 10 raised to 6 so take note that the formula define that it is squared so therefore my e1 dito is meter per second squared which is uh, the unit for the acceleration for further simplification of this formula so if you would input the different constant into your up calculator which is basically called 6.7 times 10 raised to negative 11 multiplied by 6 times 10 raised to 24 divided by 6.4 times 10 raised to 6 close and open parenthesis squared will have a value which is approximately equal to 9.81 meters per second so therefore our force at SI unit would be mass multiplied by our gravity which is based on this constant it is calculated as your gravity as equal to mass of an object or any object in the earth's surface multiplied by 9.81 meters per second squared this is the force which is basically equal to your weight okay so as we further discuss our forces uh, let me give you an example on your resultant forces which was already discussed in the first topic of your vector addition okay so this is just a review on vector addition on forces okay so let us solve this example determine the magnitude of the resultant force acting on the screw i and its direction measured clockwise from the x-axis so clockwise from the x-axis meaning that you can measure it clockwise so paganita siya with the x-axis and the resultant force okay so let us make a coordinate plane which is your y and x so particularly the best thing to do with this one is your summation of fr is just equal to f1 plus f2 using your calculator but how will we solve this one using your calculator okay just input your f1 which is 2 kilonewton so tatanggalin ko muna yung kilonewton angle of negative because it's because it is going a clockwise direction plus our six kilonewton angle of so negative 180 plus 60 degrees okay so we will have a value equal to 2.5 angle of negative 45 take that the paggamit ka ng calculator nyo you should be in complex mode and then you can use the shortcut in determining the resultant force which is basically equal to negative 1.5857 plus 6.5 61i so this will be the summation of f of x and this will be your summation of f of y so take note that 
this is in rectangular mode. So to get the magnitude of your FR, let us transform this rectangular mode into its polar. So in polar, we have FR or the magnitude of your FR is just equal to the summation of f of x squared plus the summation of f of y squared. So we'll have a value equal to the square root of negative 1.58579 okay, and so on and so forth plus so this is a squared plus negative 6.61 squared which is basically equal to 6.79 kilonewton basically bakit natin lalagyan ng kilonewton yan kasi uh Finactor out lang natin yung kilonewton which is its unit. Okay? That is the magnitude of your FR and your theta is just equal to tan inverse equal to your summation of f of y all over the summation of f of x which is equal to tan inverse which is your summation of f of y is 6.61 divided by your 1.58579 which is basically equal to shift tan 6.61 divided by 1.58579 it is equal to 76.5 degrees so take note that the 76.5 degrees is here right but how will we know where the 76.5 degrees is properly located okay so based on the it is based on the signs of your summation of f of x and f of y which is basically equal to both negative so, since this is both negative, so this is, if you would put it in a quadrant, so take note that this is, your quadrant 1 is both positive, your quadrant 2 has its x as negative and its y as positive, your quadrant 3 has both negative, and your quadrant 4 has its positive x and negative y. So, therefore, this 76.5 degrees, since this bo these two, your summation of f of x and f of y is in uh, both negative. Therefore, it can be found here. Okay? So, therefore, the 76.5 degrees is here. R, F, R, which is just a direction of 76.5 degrees. But how, how will you measure it at clockwise direction? So take note that this will be its direction at clockwise direction. So there will, therefore, this will be its alpha. Okay, The alpha at clock direction, at clockwise direction is equal to 180 uh, negative 180 plus 76.5 degrees so we'll have a value equal to 103.49 degrees this is this alpha therefore our summation of f of r at polar form will be equal to your magnitude and your angle alpha 
which is basically equal to 6.79791 kilonewton angle of negative 103.49 degrees. Okay. So, to check for this F1 and F2, or your summation of f of x and summation of f of y, basically you can just, uh, the summation of f of x is just equal to 2 kilonewton positive yen because it is going to the right. So, 2 kilonewton cosine 45 degrees plus 6 kilonewton cosine 60 degrees or less because it is going to the left. So, for the summation of f of x is just equal to 1.585786 or approximately equal to negative 1.59. And your summation of f of y is equal to 2 sine 45. So, take note that it is negative because the arrow is going down less your 6 sine 60 which is basically equal to negative 2 sine 45 less 6 sine 60 will have a value equal to negative 6.61 okay and then adding this one which is your fr so we have summation of f of x plus summation of f of y so we will have a value equal to negative 1.59 take note that it is a, it at e, this is at vector form so negative 1.59 less 6.61 i okay your i indicate its uh imaginary or your y okay next is Okay. Next example is determine the magnitude and the direction of the resultant uh, and the magnitude and the direction of the resultant force. Okay, in this time, I will use my uh, component method directly without showing you the uh, calculator method or the vector method okay so summation of f of x the summation of f of x is just equal to 300 newton going to the right plus 400 cosine 30 degrees plus uh, negative because this is going to the left 250 this is the y comp uh, the x component of the resultant 5 so therefore we'll have the ratio of k adjacent over hypotenuse so if this will be our theta okay so therefore we have 4 over 5 right so, 250 multiplied by 4 over 5, right? So, we'll have our summation of f of x as 300 plus 400 cosine 30 plus 250 multiplied by 4 over 5, which is basically equal to 446.4 newton. 446.4 newton. And then your summation of f of y is just simply equal to 400 sine 36 degrees positive because it is going up. And take note that your 300 newton has no uh, y component. Kaya si Ryan. Plus your 250, 250 multiplied by your 3 fifth or your so 
or your opposite over adjacent. So, if this is your theta, your opposite will be your 3 and your hypotenuse will be 5. Opposite over hypotenuse, I should say. So, 250 multiplied by 3 over 5. Okay. So, therefore, we will have uh, answer equal to 400 sine 30 plus 250 multiplied by 3 over 5. So, we will have a value equal to 350 Newton. So, therefore, our F R just equal to 446.4 plus 350 I. Okay, or basically equal to your summation of f of x plus summation of f of y i. Okay, or 90 degrees. X is a solving for the magnitude of the force. So, take note that the magnitude of force is simply equal to the square root of summation of f of x squared plus the summation of f of y squared which is equal to 446.4 squared plus 350 squared so getting the square root of this one so we'll have a value equal to square root of 446 squared plus 350 squared is equal to 566.93 556 Uh, four hundred four six point four we have five hundred sixty seven point twenty five five hundred sixty seven point twenty five newtons okay tangle natin five hundred sixty seven point twenty five Newtons. 25 Newtons. Okay. This will be our FR. And its direction will be the theta, which is basically equal to tan inverse summation of F of Y all over summation of F of X. Tamba. Which is equal to tan raised to negative 1 and then your 350 newtons divided by our 500 okay your 400 uh, 350 newtons divided by our 446.4 newtons take note that this Two are both positive so therefore we could say that this can be found in the first quadrant okay so we'll have our theta will be equal to shift on 350 divided by 446.4 to 1 which is equal to 38.1 degrees 38.0976 or approximately equal to 38.1 degrees okay so saan natin makikita yan uh, since this your summation of f of x and summation of f of y are both positive therefore we could conclude that this could be found in the first quadrant. So, therefore, your 38.1 degrees will be here. FR. Which is equal to 567.25. Or theta equal to 38.1 degrees. Okay. That would be the solution for this example. So, next example, 
the objective of this second, this third example is to show you this kind of forces. So determine the magnitude of the resultant force acting on the corbel in its direction theta measured counterclockwise from the x axis. So the direction theta measured counterclockwise from the x axis so therefore this will be the uh, theta that we would solve or its measurement okay so take note that pag makikita ka ng mga ganitong forces ang gagawin nyo ipoproject nyo lang siya projecting these forces here so directly here so let's say that I will have my let's say this will be my Cartesian plane y and x so i will extend my cartesian plane and i will extend my arrow you will produce a nung tawag dito ito opposite angles which is this angle 30 degrees and this angle okay ting x natin so, take note that this angle are equal. So, therefore, I may say that this is also 30 degrees. Then, syempre, pro-project din natin to dito. So, take note that this is just projection. Parehas lang yan. So, this is 600 pounds. The projection of your F3. Okay? So, pro-project natin siya. Parang itatagos natin sila sa linya. Okay? Kaya red. Next is your F2 which is 400 newtons direct to pababa yan. Pababa siya dito. 400 pounds. Okay? So, take note that 400 pounds is already the unit of a force in your English unit. Pag, kung naman, pag mass is lugs. Okay? So, andito na siya. So, therefore, this is 400 pounds. 400 pounds siya. And then this is 700 pounds. So take note that the angle of this 600 pounds is at 4, 3, 5. Okay. So how will we solve for your FR? Okay. Summation of F of X plus summation of F of Y. I. Okay. So therefore our summation of F of X. Our summation of F of X. Okay. Summation of f of x will be equal to 700 pounds. So, negative siya kasi mapunta siya sa left. So, negative 700 cosine 30 degrees. So, cosine pa rin yan. Plus 600 pounds at so, 3, 5, 3 over 5. So, saan natin nakuha yung 3 from ka adjacent over hypotenuse. So, if this is your theta, this is your adjacent, and this is your hypotenuse. Okay? And then, we have over 400 pounds has no x component. So, therefore, your summation of f of x is basically equal to negative negative 700 cosine 30 plus 600 multiplied by our 3 fifth, which is basically equal to negative 246. So, store nyo lang yan pag nasa calculator kayo. Then, pag pinakita nyo ito, pwede nyo lang around para hindi kayo mahirapang magsulat. So, 22177 or approximately equal to 218 pounds. Okay? And then, your summation of f of y will be basically equal to your negative 400 kasi pababa siya negative 400 less 600 less 600 multiplied by 4 fifth 4 fifth bakit siya 4 fifth from so opposite over hypotenuse your opposite will be 4 and your hypotenuse will be 5 Right? Less 700 sine 30 degrees. 
so we will have a value equal to negative 400 less 600 multiplied by 4 over 5 less 700 sine 30 so you will have a value equal to negative 1 to 30 or your i imaginary part so therefore your summation of fr will be equal to summation of f of x plus summation of f of y i or approximately equal to negative 246.2177 less 1 to 30i and solving for your fr or the magnitude of your fr or your resultant force is basically equal to the summation of f of x squared plus the summation of f of y squared which is equal to the summation of 246.2177 squared plus the summation of 1 to 30 squared so we'll have a value equal to we'll have a value equal to square root of So we'll have a value equal to 1254.401. So take note na your sign, so both of your summation of f of y and f of x is at negative. So therefore, uh, particularly the angle will be solved at negative or the direction will be at the third quadrant okay so how will we solve for its value at this uh theta or kung para natin sa solve yung position niya the third theta is particularly equal to particularly equal to tangent Arctan or tan inverse tan raised to negative 1 summation of f of y all over summation of f of x which is equal to 1 to 30 so arctan or tan inverse 1 to 30 divided by 246.2 218 which is equal to shift tan 1 to 30 divided by 246.218 so we'll have a value equal to 76.68 degrees 76.68 degrees so dito siya But take note that yung hinahanap natin is its direction theta measured counterclockwise from the x-axis. So therefore, ito yon, Ito yung gusto niyang kunin. This theta. Okay. So take note that this is a straight angle. So 180 to plus your 76.68 degrees. So therefore, your alpha which is the direction at your counterclockwise position which is equal to 76.68 plus 180 degrees so we will have a value equal to 258.68 degrees 258.68 degrees which is the value of your alpha or the measured uh, direction of your theta at x-axis at counterclockwise position. Okay? So, this is just a review on how to solve for the resultant forces.